Hi guys and welcome to the Sons of Cain uh, YouTube channel. Um, this week we're going to do something a little bit different. We've had uh, some correspondence in for some people. So we're going to look at sticky cane and twirling in a chair. Okay guys, we've been asked some questions about twirling figure of eight form changes. Um, obviously if you're not involved with cane masters you won't know these things but good thing to get involved in. So, this end with the ferrule is called the tip, this is the shaft, this is the crook, and here this is the horn. And if you look at the cane master designs you'll see there's various types of canes, crooks and horns to suit what you want to do. The question we had was with twirling, standing and seated and in a chair. So for those who don't know, side twirl, figure of eight, these I practice a lot, I use these a lot. Both hands, always remembering your spare hand wants to be in a guard position. And then if you look at the way the horn is at the moment, it's facing up. The horn change is when you reverse it, so it's the other way up. There are applications for this and it's something you will need to know when you're doing techniques because you will need to change it rapidly and in for a holster. So, as you can see, seated position, same thing. Changes the dynamics slightly. Again, go hand up, 12, figure of eight, horn change. Can't really holster very well because of the chair. Good thing to practice if you do really perfect your technique when you're sitting down, but you can't get your hips and everything involved. Okay, same with the helicopter. You can still do it, but you'll find there is a little bit less power but if you're going to start teaching people with disabilities, this is an important thing to do. And again, it helps get your technique down pat because you can't cheat with this one. You do actually need to rely on your technique. Well, as Chris just mentioned, you can do it in a wheelchair. It's a full length cane, although I do have a half length that I use uh, mainly when I'm at home. From here, you've got the side twirl. Again, hand in guard position. And you've got the figure of eight and you've got the horn change. That's who breaks off. A lot more power, a lot more stability when the brakes are on. Right guys, this is a little thing that I like to call sticky cane. Um, I don't think I invented it. Um, it's something I discovered about eight, nine years ago when I was training with another club. Um, with the cane, we tend to do things a lot slower and a lot less force. This is just to protect the people we're training with. Um, and people were grabbing my cane. And I got to thinking, well, what happens if I'm a little bit slow and they do grab my cane? How can I defend against this? So we started doing a few little drills, um, started messing about with it. And over the last five years, Chris and I have been working together um, we just have a little play around and it's, all it is is just angles and changing the force and pattern. It's a very ebb and flow type of uh, martial arts. So I'll bring Chris in. So if I'm in a defensive position and Chris jumps in and grabs a cane, we've now got force against force. I've got the whole range of movements that I can use to pull over. If he comes back against, I can pull and we can just keep going round and round, pull through, grab hands, um, if he's got a double hand grab on it, I can come under and use his whole arm to go through. There is no set pattern with this. You feel what the other person is doing. You can see their hand, and you can see which way will give them strength or weakness. If they start to bring pressure on that side, you just bring it back. And all it is, is if they've got the control of the cane in both hands, and it becomes a, a pushing, pulling much, let go of the cane. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to do a couple of little uh, drills and Chris is going to put some protection on and just show you what sort of strikes you can get from a, a drill. But we're going to have to be slow and careful because this thing, even at this distance, will hurt if hit in the head. As you see, my training buddy Chris, he's got his body protection on. If you want to come forward Chris just a bit, it's quite robust. But again, I don't want to hit too far and too hard. So we look at 
coming through on the, the cage, just one, one hand grab. Just by a pull push movement. Pull in here, push in there, mind your own sec. And it's just a, a strike. Again, up and down movement, we'll go to the head. You come from the outside in, from there, and then jab. The one I tend to like is you use the crook. Bring it over and just straight into the groin. Are you in a box? No. Safety tip, folks. <laughs> um, also, you've got your small strikes here, which you can just in, head, grab, and pull. Uh, you've got your pokes from there. Obviously, balance point, which is hips, groin. Or if they come up with a punch, you come here, and you've got their knee. Okay, this is a, just a, a very slow, very light lock flow drill, or we call sticky cane. So it's just going to come from here. As with everything we teach, play with it. This is not the definitive, this is not the be all, this is a principle that we use. And it is just literally the opposite motion. See where the hand is, go the opposite way. You start getting pressure, go back again. Work with it and have fun. Right. In our system of karate that we do, we do something called pushing hands, we do Wing Chun, they do Chi Sao. For those who've never done this or seen it before, the central principle with the way we do it, again, we've got a guard hand. So as I'm pushing, he's not resisting my force, he's just redirecting it. So the drill to start with is his feet. And what I'm feeling for is where he's going. I can feel he's pushing that way towards me. So if I go with it, I can pull him off balance, I can start applying blocks, or I might be trying, he's coming down, and each time I'm just trying to relocate his force, I'm not using force on force. So I might be trying to come around, so each way. So you're bending with the force. So when you're doing this with the cane, it's the same principle. You're looking for where it can go, and then taking the force and using it. In the Wing Chun work, you do the Chi Sao, exactly the same. I'm gonna try and move. So what I'm not doing is applying a force. We're just seeing where that energy is coming. We're taking it, we're redirecting it. Constant, it's a constant flow. So it's the same principle with the cane. So if you've never done this before, it's worth training, finding someone who can do it or practicing it. Then you'll get the idea, especially with the cane, there's a lot of force in the cane. If you can redirect that energy of someone pulling your cane and direct it back on themselves, it's a really good technique, especially Again, limited mobility. Try it sitting in a chair, if you can get hold of a wheelchair, just to see the difference it applies to your training. Okay guys, uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. Please stick your comments down below. Don't forget to, forget to subscribe. Um, if you want to see more from the karate videos, have a look up there. Um, I say, these are only principles. Um, it's our interpretation, so please have a look at it use it, change it, and then let us know what you've done.